Hi everyone, I am That Nursing Prof and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about how to be a better test taker. So let's get started. So the first thing you want to do is double check your answers when you take the test. So go ahead, finish the test all the way through, and then make sure you have enough time afterwards to go through and double check all of your answers. Because sometimes you realize, oh, I meant to say C, and then I spilled in the Scantron and I did B. So you can catch little things like that. So go ahead and double check all of your answers after you take the test. The next thing you should do is do practice quizzes at home when you're studying and time yourself. Time yourself just like you would if you were actually taking your real exam. Don't read into your questions or make assumptions about your questions. What they are is what they are. It's pretty straightforward for the most part in nursing school. Whatever the problem says is what the problem says. Don't think, oh, it must mean this. Or maybe they're saying this, but really they mean this. No, 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 no. Whatever it says it is, is what it is. So don't read into it, don't make it more complicated than it needs to be, and don't make weird assumptions about the questions or what the questions are asking. Always remember that the test is not real life. So the situation on the test might sound something similar to what you've experienced in clinical or in your work as a CNA or a PCT. And maybe in the real world situation, you did something completely different. We're not focusing on the real world. We're focusing on what did you learn in school? What did you learn in your book? The test is testing you on the book information, your lecture information. And that's what NCLEX is going to do too. NCLEX is not going to use your life experience and your 10 years as a CNA. They're not testing you on that. They're testing you on what did you learn, what did you comprehend, and what do you understand from the book. So the test is not real life. Eliminate clearly wrong answers. So hopefully when you're reading through the answer choices, you can see, oh, well, this is clearly not right. You know, that one's obviously wrong. Cross it out. If you can write on your test, if your teacher lets you write on your test, write all over your test. It's going to help you. So if the wrong answer is obvious, cross it out. Then don't focus it on it anymore. Because what happens is students will read through the answers. They'll read all four of them. They'll say, well, C is clearly wrong but then they're not sure what the real answer is, so they'll go back to it, and then they start, this little voice kind of comes in your brain, maybe C isn't wrong, maybe C does kind of make sense, right? So don't do that, don't let that happen to you. So if you find an answer that is clearly not the right answer, cross it off, or mentally cross it off in your brain if you cannot write on the test, and then ignore it, and then focus on the other choices. Make educated guesses. So if you're not 100% sure it's either A or B, pick one you think is the most reliable answer. Try to narrow it down as best you can because if it's four, then you have a 25% chance of getting it right. If it's only two, now you have a 50% chance of getting it right. So make educated guesses and never, ever, ever leave a test uh, question blank. So answer the whole test. If you see like, oh gosh, time is running out and I can't finish this exam, don't turn in blank things. Skim through it really quick and see if you can eliminate answers and then kind of narrow it down best you can and then fill in the blank because you have a 25% chance of getting it right if you fill in something and you have a 100% chance of getting it wrong if you leave it blank. So never leave it blank and try to make educated guesses on things you really don't understand. When you're reading the questions and you're reading your potential answers, you want to look for some keywords. Some keyword examples include always, never, only, except, none. So most of these words, if you see these words, that's a big red flag that that's probably not the correct answer, right? Because we don't always do something in medicine. Medicine is always changing. I guess that's a bad example of using the word always. <laughs> But medicine is always changing and our practice is always changing. So we don't only do this and we don't only do that and we don't never do this, right? So looking for those keywords is going to kind of help you um, pick out the right and wrong answers. 
If you're able to write on your test, again, circle key information in the question. Circle relevant information. Write all over this test. A lot of times you'll be given a question and it'll be like a paragraph. It'll be like five sentences long. And it's a lot of information in the question and you have to think, all right, well, what about this information is actually important? Because there is going to be information in those questions that is not important. And the whole point of those questions is to throw you off. It's to get you to think that, oh, this is important and this is relevant. And then it'll lead you to picking answer B when it's not relevant at all. And you were supposed to ignore that completely. And the relevant information would lead you to answer A, right? So if you are capable of doing so, if you're allowed to do so, cross out irrelevant information and circle the important stuff. And that's going to help you find your answers a little bit better too. And then finally, read each question carefully. So a lot of times when students come see me about a test, they want to go over an exam and we go over the exam, they go, oh, I didn't even realize that's what it was asking. Oh, I knew that. So it's not that they didn't know the information, they just didn't read the question carefully enough and they didn't understand what the question was asking and they picked the wrong answer. A lot of times this happens when we have questions that say, all of the following except, or not, or what should the nurse do differently? So they're looking for wrong answers, right? What would require the nurse to follow up, right? They're looking for incorrect statements and the student didn't realize that, and so they're circling correct statements. So read your questions very carefully, know what they're actually asking in the question. Look for those keywords we talked about before. And then finally, if it's one of the questions where you can, answer it in your head first. That's what I always like to do when I take a test, is read the question, and before you even look at the answers, maybe even cover up the answers, Read the question and then in your brain think about what you think the answer would be or should be. Then read your choices, if it's a multiple choice or a select all that apply. Read your choices and then say, oh yes, this matches what I was thinking in my brain. So answer it in your head first. And then a final tip I have, which a lot of my students have started implementing um, because the time the timing of the test kind of makes them nervous and it freaks them out and they're sitting next to somebody and that person is taking the test way faster than they are and it makes them feel like self-conscious and it makes them feel like they should be taking it faster and then they don't focus on the test, is taking the test backwards. This is something that I've seen a lot of students do and it's been really helpful for them. So you get your exam and it's maybe 50 questions, start going 50, 49, 48. That way you're not comparing yourself to your classmate sitting next to you who's going one, two, three, right? Because you're not taking it at the same time, you're not answering the same questions at the same time. It's gonna make you feel a little less anxious and a little less nervous when taking the exam. And then finally, if you are in a position where you do need special accommodations, don't be embarrassed or afraid to ask. Let your teacher know, I need a little bit more time on exams. I can't take it with the large group of students. I need to take it separately at a different time. Every school has um, somebody that can set that up for you, somebody else that can proctor that exam for you. Maybe it's your teacher, maybe it's a counselor, but don't be afraid to ask for those accommodations if you feel you need them. That's totally fine. So I hope this video was helpful. Uh, let me know if you have any other special test-taking tips, and I'll see you on the next one.